Should you buy the 2020 M1 MacBook Air in 2022? Let's talk about it. Let me start off by saying I've tested a lot of Macs. I'll have pictures of them. I have a bunch in my room here. I like to test different equipment, old equipment, new equipment. And what I'm gonna to do today is I wanna kind of explain, this is a 2020 M1 MacBook Air. This is the base model. So eight gigs of RAM, 256 gig SSD drive. Should you be buying this in 2022? This is about two years old right now. And obviously I've only had it for about a year, so it's kind of my one year review test. But should, is this a good buy right now in 2022? So that's what we're gonna talk about. So if you wanna know about this, let me just kind of set up the video. I'm gonna go through my five biggest likes of this device and my five biggest dislikes of this device. And then I'm at the very end, I'm just gonna let you know, is it a good deal or not still in 2022 if you're thinking about buying one? So without further ado, let's get into the video. One through five on my likes, one through five on my dislikes, let's go. All right, number one like is gonna just be the design of it. So it's got this wedge shape and you can kind of see it'll have close up pictures and stuff, but it's so thin, so light, and it's easy to carry, easy to move, 13 inches, a perfect size for kind of planes and stuff like that. The wedge shape is actually good. It doesn't cut into your arms as much as that kind of square, the new 14 and 16 inch kind of square models. So the design of it's really elegant and nice, and I think it's actually really good still in 2022. So, you know, without further, you know, getting into it, I think the design is really, really good. Um, there's some things lacking on the design, which I'll get into in a second, but overall, just the lightness of it and, uh, you know, easy to carry, just all that kind of stuff combined gives me a thumbs up on the design. All right, number two on the like is gonna be performance. So again, 2000, you know, 20, this is perfect, 2022, still perfect. And I have the base metal again. I'm, I'm reviewing the eight gigs of RAM only, 256 gigabyte SSD drive. So performance wise, this does everything pretty well. So you can basically go on and get your email, do the internet browsing. Um, you know, even 4K, I have H.264, I use a Panasonic G7. I can do, you know, 30 and 60 frames per second with almost no stuttering on this thing with only eight gigs of RAM. So 4K video editing, not a problem. Now, if, you're, if your primary job is video editing, I video edit every couple days. If you're doing it every day, twice a day, it's worth the extra money um, to get something better or at least get the 16 gigs of RAM on this. You know, that's the one question. If you're doing kind of video editing and stuff, 16 gigs of RAM, but for the base model, I would say for video conferencing, business applications, anything you do at work, if you're just kind of normally like an accountant or something, this is more than enough for most people. So performance wise, it's great. SSDs, I'll have some kind of examples coming up here. Incredible too, the speed of these SSDs are just super fast. You know, you can see the, the results right here in Blackmagic. So overall, a great device still in 2022. All right, my third like is gonna be the screen. So the screen is something that once you get used to it, you can't go back to 1080p on a normal Windows laptop. So I kind of warn you on that. So if you go ahead and pick up the M1 MacBook Air, the screen is incredible. And it's, it's just very crisp text-wise. You know, you can do keynote editing and stuff like that. I can, you can see it on my screen now. It's just something that's very easy in on the eyes. It's got 400 nits of brightness. It's a little bit less than the 500 on some of the other systems. But 400 nits of brightness is plenty bright in most cases. Um, I usually have it about 60% at the most that I ever, you know, move it up to unless I'm outside or something. So overall, the screen is a huge positive here. Like I said, it's it's worth the price, you know, at around 850 or so. It's probably the best screen you can buy for that price right now. So definitely the screen is still perfect in 2022. All right, my fourth biggest like is resale value. And let me explain. So you can pick these up for, you know, the target price is gonna be like 850 or so. You can still sell these, I'm guessing. You know, right now, I looked them up. You can still sell them for like 90% of the cost of a new one. I don't know why, but you can do it. Maybe 80 to 90%. So in a couple years, this is gonna have great resale value. It's got the M1 chip in it, so that's a great thing. Obviously, it doesn't have Intel anymore. So as long as you have that base metal M1 chip, it can run kind of the, the applications from Apple from the phones and stuff. So this is a great pickup. I mean, it's gonna have a, you know, basically a good resale value for many, many years to come. Plus the, the cost of it isn't too much to begin with overall compared to most other laptops that are out there. So that's my biggest thing here is, you know, can I resell this in a couple years and get my money back? And with this you can, so that's my number four. 
All right, my number five, my biggest like, is gonna also be a dislike, and I'll explain this in a second, but it's over the last year, it's been the battery. So the battery, you know, for me, for what I do, it's lasted me about nine to 10 hours. Now, people are gonna say, well, this is rated for 18 hours, and I'll get into that on my dislikes, but I get about nine or 10 hours of what I do on this, and I do some light video editing or video editing every couple days. I do browsing, some video conferencing. Overall, though, the reason I'm giving this a like or one of my top five likes is because of the fact that no other laptop I've had, Windows included, has been able to get 10 hours of battery life on a pretty quick charge. So that's going to be one of my biggest likes. And in 2022, it's still going to have one of the best batteries out there no matter what. So you can't complain with this. It is definitely a good value. So those are my likes right now. And then I'm going to go through my five dislikes. And then at the very end, I'm going to wrap it up, letting everyone know, you know, is this a buy in 2022? All right, for my dislikes, don't forget, I'm talking about the base model. So 8 gigs of RAM, 256. I know it's a little bit out there as far as like you can obviously upgrade this and stuff, but that's what I'm talking about. Um, so there's five things I'm going to say that are negative. And one thing that's not included in these five is the smell of this thing. So I have a video. Check out my video. It says something like, why does my MacBook Air stink or something? It's a video I made maybe about six or eight months ago. When I got this, I, the thing just reeked of some kind of chemical. I bought another one, it reeked again. I had to hang the cord in the garage. So that's a whole other story. Check out that video. That's not one of my five negatives, but it is for a lot of people. I have thousands of views on that, thousands of people saying stuff. So check that out. Anyways, my very first thing is the base model. So base model, my, my first negative is storage. So I truly believe that with the cost of storage right now, no, no laptop in the world should come with less than five. 12 gigabytes. This has got 256. Now, again, I know it's not a direct problem of the laptop. I bought that. I understand that. Um, it's just my dislike of it if I buy the base model. That's all I'm saying. Now, what I tend to do is I'll show you some pictures up here. I actually, you know, definitely pick up like this little inland SSD drive. I'll show you right here. It's a great uh, value for them. You know, I think it's around 512 or you can get 256 even cheaper, but it's a great SSD drive. And what I do is I, it works flawlessly with this M1 MacBook Air. And then I do a lot of video editing and I just use basically, uh, you know, iMovie. And what I do is I move my iMovie library onto the SSD drive just like this. And then I do all my video editing right off that external drive so it doesn't use any of the space on my computer here. Um, and just basically, you know, when I'm doing the, the processing of everything, it's going to be, be on the, the CPU, you know, load here. But as far as the storage and stuff, I'm doing it on the external drive, which is an SSD drive, but not nearly as fast as this. But it saves me a ton of space. But the reason for the negative is not so much that. It's just the fact that after you get everything back, um, you know, when you buy this brand new, it's got about 200 gigabytes usable you know, more or less after it has kind of the system files on it. And then if you start adding a couple programs here and there, or doing some stuff there and there, you can eat it up pretty quickly. Now again, it's not a total negative against the device I could have bought a bigger drive, but for the cost wise, I feel like it should have a 512 in there. All right, the second negative, again, I can't complain because people are gonna say it's not, I knew about this, so I'm not gonna to totally complain about this, but it's basically these two ports. I mean, you get basically you know, two ports here that you have to work with, and then you get a audio jack on the other side. That's all you get. So you're basically going to be looking at a $50 dongle no matter which way you look at it. You gotta go out and buy one. You can see from my video, though, I do reviews of them, and I have literally hundreds, you know, hundreds of them. I have about 10 or 15 of them, and I can choose which one I want. Um, I use, you know, it's, it's a very easy process when I go to the coffee shop or something. So it's not a huge negative either. It's just that I wish, I know that, you know, I'm kind of fighting the design because the design is so slim. You can only put really USB-C in here. It would have been nice with a little bit more ports, but again, it's not so much against the device. It's just, you know, when you buy the base model M1 MacBook Air, it's something that kind of is a negative to me is not having any of those extra ports. So just something to consider if you're going to buy this in 2022. All right, my number three negative was also a positive, but it's the battery, right? So Apple says that this should be able to get up to, they say 18 hours, right? And I have people that tell me they get 18 hours all the time. I've done test after test on test on this. I've never gotten more than 10 hours on mine. I don't know if it's just difference in battery capacity or something or bad batteries versus good batteries. I tested this when it was new a couple weeks later. I do a lot of video editing too, but even when I don't, even when I just do you know browsing and stuff and watching videos, I don't get really more than 10 hours. So I, I have to count that as a negative. The other negative with the battery that I've run into is battery bleed. So on these Mac, you know, the M1 MacBook Airs, I basically put it into sleep mode and I'll go to sleep or whatever. It'll bleed like three or 4% every night. And I haven't found a way to get rid of that unless I actually turn the device off. It's kind of common with most stuff. Obviously your battery might drain a little bit, 
But you know, if you don't use it for three or four days and then you're like 10 or 15% down, it's a little bit of an issue with me. Um, not a big issue, but I like to keep my battery cycles down to resell this later. So you can keep it plugged in. You know, I have a whole video on what you should do as far as keeping stuff plugged in, check that out. But I just wanna say battery is kind of a negative as well because it does not get for me, it might for you. I understand people can put bad comments. If it does for you, that's fine. But my battery that ship with it, I get about 10 hours. All right, number four negative is the screen, and let me explain. Again, that was a positive, right? The screen, though, is super, I mean, look at these pictures. They're super sharp. I mean, it's it's incredible screen, but it's incredibly fragile. At least that's the way I feel. Now, I've read stuff if you leave, like, a case, like, if you have a, a keyboard cover or even, like, a little pebble in there and you close the case, it'll crack. I've seen tons of videos on that. It just feels like that. It feels very fragile when you open up the top of the screen. You know, the top of that clamshell just seems fragile. It seems like something in there could scratch it or crack it very easily. Um, I've had other laptops where I don't, I never cared that much, but with this one, it just seems something is, is you know, you have to be careful. So while the screen is a beautiful screen to look at for the money, and it's the best laptop you can get with that screen, again, you know, you have to just be a little bit careful with it. You can't and make sure there's no foreign object in it when you shut it because you're probably gonna break that screen. It's kind of fragile that way, and I had it marked as a negative. All right, and my fifth negative with you know this experience of my M1 MacBook Air base model is when I was buying it is, is Apple's kind of tax and everything. So again, this is a little bit different. It's not directly related to this, this device, but it, it wasn't in my buying process. So when I bought this, you know, I got it for an incredible deal, but in order to go up to, you know, another 512 on the, on the gigabyte on the SSD or just, you know, basically double 256 to 512, they wanted 200 bucks, you know, and that's, that's expensive. I mean, it should be around $100. RAM as well. If you want 16 gigs of RAM, it's hard to even find those like at Best Buy and stuff. But at the end of the day, uh, you can find them at uh, usually a Micro Center or something. They sometimes have them. Great, great store. I'm not affiliated with them. But, but anyways, that's another 200 bucks if you want to go from 8 to 16 gigs of RAM when you can go out and buy that you know, pretty much anywhere for about 60 bucks. So 100 bucks, they're making huge profits on that. 200 bucks they're gouging you. So it kind of ropes everyone into this, this model device if you don't have a ton of money. And that's kind of a, just a negative in the sense that Apple needs to change that. I mean, if they can, I know that they can charge that kind of Apple tax. But at the end of the day, they gotta be a little bit fair. Even at 100 bucks for eight gigs of RAM, it's kind of expensive. And uh, 200 bucks is a little ridiculous. So it kind of forces people, again, without the money or they were in school or just you know trying to scrape by to get the base model. And then you run into some of those other issues of having to buy other stuff. All right, so we're gonna wrap this up. So do I recommend this in 2022, the 2020 base model M1 MacBook Air? For sure. So the positives completely outweigh the negatives. It's the best screen you can get for the money right now. You try to pick these up around you know 850. I got mine for like 750 or something on some sale a long time ago. They actually went up in cost because of everything in the world going on. Um, screen, the, the resolution's incredible. Um, the performance is incredible for what you get here. I mean, it's. I'm just looking at some of my notes here as far as the build qualities is going to be one of the best out there, except for the screen's a little flimsy. But I mean, when you put it all in all together, if you buy this right now. You know, it comes down to if you want to sell this maybe in two or three years, if you're like a person that likes to buy the newest and greatest, you can still buy a 2020 M1. Think about that. And you'll probably sell this. You'll buy this for $850. you will probably be able to sell this for like 600 in a couple of years. And uh, you'll get your money back, 600 bucks. Go out and buy the next greatest thing. Maybe wait a year before the M2 comes out. So I totally recommend it. It's still not obsolete. It's not even close. People are looking at the M1 as kind of the newest chip out there, even though that they came out with the Ultra, the Max, and all that kind of stuff. But overall, it's a great deal. I totally recommend it in 2022. Can't go wrong with it for anything in the house. Unless you're doing extreme video editing or you know you need 16 gigs of RAM no matter what. 16 gigs of RAM on this is basically like 32 before. You know, eight on this is like 16 before just because of the memory, how they can use it. It's integrated into the CPU. So overall, I totally recommend it except for ports and stuff like that and what I, what I talked about. And hopefully yours doesn't stink like mine did. But go out and buy it. And uh, I wish everyone the best of luck. Subscribe if you can to my channel. It's gonna totally help me out. Um, pick one of these up. I'll have links in the description. Peace.